Hi, Hi folks. Uh, we've got several people that want to figure out how to stop their horse from walking off when they get on. And evidently, that's a pretty common problem. So I'm going to go through several different options. And the first one is the proper way to get on, as far as I'm concerned, is to have a hold of your reins and have them the right mass so that you can check your horse if you get on. I grab the mane, I turn my stirrup, and then I grab the horn, and I've still got my reins. Then I can check if the horse starts to walk off. So I guess I've seen people just lay the reins on and get on, and that teaches the horse to walk off. So that's the number one correct way. Okay, folks, now with the western bit on, Another way of doing this is if your horse walks off, you want to bend their head around. Well, you don't want to do that with a cheek piece. That's betrayal, unacceptable. So put a halter on like a sheep herder over the bridle and then have it set in here. And if you take it as a given that your horse is going to walk off, just set it up where you'll be prepared and you start to get on any way you want. And right about right, I'll just drop the reins about right. And incidentally, when you get on, head for the other stirrup. Don't lean way back like this and pull the saddle. That's what teaches them to not want to stand. So as you get on, head for the other side. Okay, so now pretend the horse walked off. You just step down and take this lead rope you can even go behind the saddle and you pull on their head like this and they don't like that and bend their head around and when they turn just hold your hand up and they'll stand so you may have to do it a couple times but that's how you do it as soon as you feel it coming just reach it put it over the cannel unless you got a real no lariat and a real slick horn. But even from getting on from here and the saddle strings and all that stuff, it starts to fall apart. Just step back down, put it here and pull on it. And pull until he bends his neck. And he'll quit. Then the next time you get on, he'll stand. You do not pull sideways on the rein. So that's another setup of how to fix this. All right, folks, here's another one. If you have a snaffle bit, all you want is the right rein. And you start to get on and things fall apart, you just pull on the right rein. So I've said check, I've got the main, I put in my foot and I start to get on and the horse starts to move. So I lift my hand, step off and take the rein with me and pull his head around. Now I set him right back up where I was. And I say, now, can you make it? Right rein. Step on. Horse starts to leave. Step down. Reach around. Pull the head around. Spin the horse. Takes about twice, and then they stand still. All right, now here's another one, and that's having the horse go to a mounting block for you. Now, if you don't have a horse like this, it's not real used to him. When you get to here, this is the one time you actually turn around. Now you can stop him easier. Get him about where you want. Now, when you go to get on the block, hang on to your reins so that when you step up here, the math is right. You can check. 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 
Okay, then you can just walk off. And of course, when you come home, put them back to the block just because of uh, schooling purposes. Have them stand at the block to get off. That'll make it all just that much better. Don't let go of the reins. I split them, left rein, right rein, and left rein. Okay, now once you've shown them how to, you put that between something in a building, and you get them to stand there, then be ready again with your reins. As you step up, check. Step on, check. 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 Put their foot back. Don't let them go until you tell them. You're the one that decides when you go. Then go ahead and go. And to me, same thing. When you get, when you get back from your ride, make them go up to the block again. Reins in hand. Step off. Check. Prepared. Horse is fine. Another way of doing this is, is that you've all seen them pick you up off the fence. Well, I'll teach them that. Now the way I teach a horse to pick me up off the fence when I can is I just back my truck up to the fence on the outside of the corral and I stand on the flatbed and I can walk back and forth while I'm schooling this horse to come get me. And it seems to cut down on a lot of climbing around and dinking around. Now the last one I want to show you Oh, and by the way, when you teach them to pick you up off the fence, what you'll notice after you've done it several thousand times, as you start to climb the fence, they'll move over and be there by the time you get up to the rail you want. So that's how you know when you've taught them. Now the last one is stretching. And stretching I really like because if they're stretched out like they're going to pee, they can't walk off. So you want to hold the reins so that you can check the horse and whatever foot is forward you start with the other foot so it'll be the right front so you pull with your hand on the saddle horn and you put all the weight on the left front now you reach under with your foot and tap the fo foot then he'll get comfortable with it and he'll learn to move his foot forward now you push just stay with them. And the reason I hold the reins is so the hind legs can't touch. Now I'm going to push on the saddle horn and touch the hoof and get it to land on the ground. There. This is the perfect horse because he doesn't know how to do this. Well, okay. This is real of what you're going to run into. Now this horse, as you know, a few months ago, he was worried about everything on the ground. So when I'm coming in in a blind spot, so this time I'm gonna put the weight on the left front and he shifted his own weight. Now I'm gonna use my right horn, my right rein to discourage the rear end walking around. I'll bring him back around. There. Obviously it's easier to teach him this in a snaffle. Now I'm going to push and put the weight on the right front and I'm just barely going to be prepared. I'm pushing, pushing, that's wrong, pushing, I'm ta there that's correct. I'm just barely touching the heel bulb, okay. As you can see he keeps monkeying around. Well it doesn't matter, it takes two weeks to train him this, train them how to do this. Weight, pulling, loading up the weight on the left front, reaching under. He already knows it. I'm going to discourage him walking backwards. Discourage walking backwards. Lift, 
Bam, he did it. He just moved the front, the left front. I'm gonna move the left front again. I'm just barely touching him with my boot. Now I'm gonna pull the weight to me and he moved the right front on his own. So you just witness how it gets started. That's what I literally mean. That's how it gets started. So you do this every day or twice a day and in a couple weeks all you do is rock the saddle horn and the horse will stretch. That's my favorite way if I have a horse, this horse stands, but if you have a horse that tends to move and if you're old and crippled, you get them to stretch, they get shorter. So I hope that helps out and that's pretty much most of the ways, but that picking you up off the fence thing to me has proven as a cowboy to pay off lots of times if you're out in the brush or something happens, you're whatever, you can step on a rock, a log, anything, anything high enough to help you get on, they'll come over and pick you up. So that's another one that's worth a million dollars. And uh, our friends in Australia and Victoria, we send out our best to you because you're shut down again and again. And I know it's really hard on everybody, just like in America. And I also got to tell you, I just got back from a run to Montana and went up on a really, really beautiful ranch and uh, worked with some folks up there. And I'll give you the short story because it means a lot to me as a cowboy. On this particular ranch I was on, it's a big cow outfit, and they have a horse program. Well, there was a little one-year-old girl about this high, and she was like a little magpie. She just jabbered and jabbered and jabbered, had no idea what she was saying. But she was a very happy child, and if you don't have children on a ranch, there's something wrong. The owners of the ranch, from there to this one-year-old little girl, at the peak there was probably 12 people around us, and everybody there treated each other with the highest level of respect. That's what will stick in my mind the rest of my life. It isn't about the cows and the horses. And if everybody in the world would treat everybody with the respect that I saw on that ranch amongst themselves, nobody was any better than anybody else. And it was really, really refreshing to be around that. So I want to thank them. And I just wanted to share that with you about real, real ranch people. Thank you.